Thank you, Mr. Adams. Mr. Johnson. Hi, how you guys doing? Uh, Hi. Senators. One of the things I wanted to bring up, first let me tell you who I am. Name's James Johnson, uh, co-founder of a group called E Pluribus Unum, and one of the leaders and spokesperson for the Ohio Unorganized Militia. I've spoken to many groups around Ohio and in other states, and I've also helped start some groups. Now, what I wanted to touch on was what Mr. Thompson said. I think he focused on a key point, which was why these groups are forming. Why is it growing like it is? And that's some of the topics that need to be addressed. And I think maybe you can talk to some people on the inside like you have here to answer those questions. To put it to you bluntly, some of the legislation that's being coming out of Washington, some of the executive actions that are taking place. Ladies and gentlemen, these things started a revolution 200 years ago and got this country started. And the people are seeing this. The national news media and the actions of this government is some of the best recruitment we could have. We don't have to say much. All you have to do is talk to the, act, to the average person out there to tell you, how do you feel about your government? And the people you look at here, we're the calm ones. We're the ones that calm people down. Now, I'm speaking here as a representative for my state and other groups that I know of. The animosity that I see out there between the citizens, all of them, and the government is frightening. What they did was after listening to all these, all these abuses and government atrocities that you're going to hear here tonight, today, and they saw that they were going to no avail, they decided to see what they could do to become part of the solution. They looked into the law and under Title 10 USC 311 saw a phenomenon known as the unorganized militia that consists of all people, even the people taking these pictures right here, everyone. And they begin to form themselves in units for their own self-defense and their self-preservation. Now, the way we stand now, and it's good that we're getting these views aired out, because 200 years ago, the British didn't get the hint until they saw dead redcoats out there. But this time, maybe we, maybe we can get this out in the open and have things resolved. Because I feel, and it's concerning to me, and I'm being sincerely honest, that with the increasing polarization between the tax-paying public out here and what goes on, not only in here, but certain state governments, that the only thing standing between some of the current legislation being contemplated and armed conflict is time. It's one of the reasons I got in this movement to help prevent that. Now, you can see from the last two years of sales from the firearms producers in this country, this nation is probably one of the most heavily armed forces on earth. And I have heard more and more people say, if one of these black suited, armor wearing, state sponsored terrorists come taking down my door, I'm gonna blow somebody away. They don't call themselves militia. They don't even call themselves patriots. They call themselves American citizens who are getting tired of confiscatory tax rates, increasingly legislation, increasingly heavy regulations, which is they believe are leading them down a path to involuntary servitude. And one of the slogans that's been going around, especially in Ohio, is what I've been telling people for those who think that this is just primarily an angry white male movement, is that if our ancestors would have been armed, they would not have been slaves. That's why people are beginning armed. Not so much with firepower. That's not the thing that makes it dangerous. What makes it dangerous that they're being armed with knowledge? What you're going to see is a growing number of citizens, and you're saying that now, that's why we're here. Move away from the authority that is here, around, around the, in the Bellway, and begin to create their own constitutional authority. You're going to begin to see this in the resurgence of the common law courts. You're going to begin to receive this, and I'm going to summarize here, in the formation of the militias. That's what came first to defend ourselves. But you're also going to see this on the legislative venue. You're going to see your own candidates in our own elections and hopefully that we can become a system which will attract others into a constitu more constitutional based system. Thank you very much. Now, we advocate that more than everything, voting. But we seem to have a problem here during these campaigns when all of these wonderful politicians, God love them, say whatever they're going to say and they get inside the beltway and everything is, how do we say, politics as usual. Now, what's going on as this trend continues and you guys got to listen to this you're pushing people's backs against the wall out there 
We got people out there hungry, like I'm talking about. People out there starving, and people tired of getting terrorized by law enforcement. Well, I shouldn't say law enforcement. I will, I will support law enforcement whenever they support the law. I'll just call them enforcement. They're getting outright economically terrorized, socially terrorized. I mean, the political correctness is getting out of hand. That is why these people are, what they're doing, what this militia is now, it's a mindset. It's the civil rights movement of the 90s. It's people sitting there with, don't tread on me, stamped across their forehead. There's people drawing a line in their sand. That's what it is. Nobody's going to go out there and uh, shoot things. Nobody's going to go out there and blow up things. We're not, ba we're not baby killers. We're baby boomers. We're not terrorists. We're taxpayers. We're not extremists. We're just extremely ticked off at the way the government is deviating away from what's going on around here. And when I say we, as this militia, as this little covert group out there, no, it's everybody. But just because you call you, just because you say we're going to form ourselves a militia, it doesn't make you the militia. What we stand here, what we stand for here, is a constitution. That's it. See, right now, the militia, I look at it as a constitutional safety net. What you have are these groups who are organizing themselves in a manner that the constitution will be preserved, no matter what kind of action this government or any other government takes. That's the little friction point you're going to run into there. One of the things that was mentioned that was mentioned here earlier, I think Senator Specter mentioned it. He said, were the militias a threat to the federal government? And I says, gee, you walk outside of 495 and the question's the other way around. Are, is the government a threat to the militia? The militia is everybody. It's just a law in which people form themselves a group to self-defense de and for their security. Okay, it's not to wage war, but if a war is waged, these groups plan on winning. And let me tell you something else. It's, speaking of this, you're saying should this be looked into? It's a mindset. I was at a um, gun range earlier this year, and they happened to be firing machine guns that they own lawfully. And we have people. I'm talking law enforcement. I'm talking military. We have a lot of sympathetic people in those branches who all were down there with their firearms. And with the awesome display of firepower that I saw on there, and that was just one iota of it. Okay? I say this sincerely, I don't mean to direct this at anybody here, but a lot of people see what's coming down. They, they see some of the executive orders that are being thrown at them, some of the statements that are being made directed toward the American public. When you hear things about, there was a survey out in 29 Palms, California, in which military officers were asked, if necessary, would they shoot on Americans who refuse to give up their firearms? In any other country, that constitutes a serious threat. The military is not to be used with law enforcement. And there are certain inalienable rights people just aren't going to give up. This is the problem we face here. Even if you say, hey, this is a real bad idea, these guys are a bad idea, and we ought to go just stomp their heads in, you got a problem because they're going to shoot back. And I, I can tell when the other officers were up here, it was a serious concern. Even though, hey, we all want to preserve our constitutional rights, okay? If there's nuts out there, heck, we'll probably find them before you do and turn them over to you. But as far as the mainstream approach of this thing, and when we hear about some of the plans or ideas that they would like to see happen to us, okay, now I have seen them take place. Um, I am, for instance, I'm talking about Brunswick, Ohio. We had one gentleman who knocked, got his door knocked on, he said, no, go back and get a warrant. It's under the Constitution. Get a warrant, get probable cause. Okay, the result was he kicked his door in seven times. So this guy, this, off, this person with a legally owned weapon shot him. She said it was a police officer. If a police officer kicks down my door with no warrant, no probable cause, what am I supposed to do? Incidents like that mm -hmm. have happened throughout the course of history. Will continue to happen. Let me talk about the racist aspect now. <clears throat> the, it's getting old. I'm getting real tired of being called a Klan member. <laughs> I'm getting tired of being called a member of the Aryan Nations group. I spoke two weeks ago down at the Lincoln Memorial, along with two other black people, and the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms, and I believe there was somebody else Jewish who had helped organize it, and the reports came out that a racist, anti-Semitic militia group held a rally on the Lincoln Memorial. Are these people blind or is there an agenda afoot here? Okay? There are more black people showing up every day. A lot of the things that these people sit around in these meetings, these so-called right-wing wackos and talk about, happen daily in black communities. And black communities know this. 
the first people concerned seriously about neighborhood house-to-house -house searches and seizures were over in Chicago. They were black. Good grief, almost half the people in Waco who got killed were black. This movement isn't about guns and skin color. It's about liberty. It's about freedom. Amen. The same kind of the same kind of legislation we're seeing coming down on everybody now came down on blacks just after the Civil War. That's why they're getting involved in this thing, and it's going to come eventually to somebody, you know, as you keep ignoring us and saying, "Well, these guys are just a bunch of angry white men." Well, pardon me, pardon me for interrupting, yeah, but yeah. they have started the vote now, so oh, we're going to have to conclude in just yeah. a few minutes. Okay.